pail. <laughs> Are you awake? Hmm. She's stirring. This is probably a bad idea. Hey guys, I am finally going to share my what's in my hospital bag video. This has been much requested um, and it's my hospital bag for delivery of my baby. Now, I was planning on filming this before I delivered my baby, but if you saw our um, delivery story, she came a couple weeks early, a bit unexpected. Um, I go into, we go into huge detail over the whole story in that video, so I will link that for you guys. Throw it up in a card for you if you want to check it out. Um, but luckily, I had already had my bag packed because we had like one sort of emergency run to the hospital that we weren't prepared for, and then one non-emergency run to the hospital, um, but we were prepared to deliver that time. So between those two trips to the hospital, which were five days apart, I had time to kind of tweak the bag in preparation for a C-section, which I had that point was pretty sure I was going to have to have because I had packed the bag with a vaginal delivery in mind um, and the length of your stay um, at the hospital changes depending on what kind of delivery you had. So with a vaginal delivery, I think standard is two days after the day of delivery. So you stay like an additional two days. Whereas with a C-section, at least at the hospital I delivered at, it's four additional days. So we were there a total of five days. So I basically added stuff in just so we'd have enough to carry us over. Um, but anyway, now I can show you the bag and tell you what I used and what I didn't um, because we've already done all that. <laughs> it's been a few weeks, we have the baby. You know, so I can kind of do it all in one punch, which is nice. One, two punch. Okay, so first of all, I packed um, a smaller um, tote style bag, it's a Vera Bradley bag. It's actually Mickey and Minnie Mouse. And it's this, it's the, the, my actual hospital bag that I packed all of our clothes and things in for all three of us. Um, it's also a Disney Vera Bradley bag. And I got both of these at Disney World at some point, but I don't remember when. Um, if they're still available, I'll try to link them for you guys. They're super cute. I like the I liked packing the Vera Bradley bags because they're super light, um, so I knew that I couldn't carry a lot being very pregnant, and then obviously just having the C-section, I couldn't carry anything really except for the baby, um, and I still can't. Uh, so um, it was nice to have lightweight bags for Dawn um, to kind of manage that situation. Okay, so in the tote bag, this is the bag we brought in um, on the 28th, the second time, well actually we took it both times, on the 23rd and the 28th when we weren't sure if we were going to have to deliver that day or not. Um, and this was the bag, we left everything else in the car, but we brought this bag into the labor and delivery ward for our procedures. So on the first emergency run, it was checking my amniotic fluid levels, and then I was sent home because they went back into the normal range, so we didn't end up needing any of our like big haul stuff. And then the second time on the 28th when we went, it was to check the amniotic fluid levels again, and also attempt an external version, and then possibly deliver, um, depending on the circumstances, which obviously we did. So uh, we left everything in the car, which just seemed like the thing to do and just brought this bag in with kind of stuff for us to do during these, you know, waits for these procedures because we were at the hospital for quite a few hours for both circumstances. So I had brought my, packed my computer which didn't end up using once at all while I was there, um, except as a charging device because I thought I was so prepared and I packed all the chargers but I forgot to pack the pat like the power bricks, the thing that the USB cord plugs into, into the wall. Of course, but luckily I had my computer, so we just plugged my computer in and then plugged the charging cords into my computer's USB port. So it served a purpose, but I didn't use it for anything else. And we were at the hospital, like I said, after I delivered for five whole days. Um, but man, you think you have all this time. You think you would have all this time, but you really don't. <laughs> there is no time. I also packed a folder um, with uh, some pieces of paper. I wasn't sure if they were gonna provide me with um, paper for footprints. They actually did. Um, I will show you your little footprints. They gave me a couple of copies. Um, so I tucked those in there and I also had brought some of these little name tags I'd seen on Pinterest, this really cute picture where somebody used a hello my name is tag um, 
for to announce the baby. So I brought a Sharpie and, and four tags that I wrote the name on. Um, so I had four tries to get it right. You can see the one I ended up using was with the heart, but um, I just wanted to make sure that I had some, um, you know, room for error. So I brought those things. I'd also brought a book. This is the book I've been reading lately. It's um, Jewel's Autobiography, Never Broken. And um, I both trips to the hospital, the false alarm, kind of, I don't know if it's a false alarm, a false alarm, and then the actual delivery time. I had time to read, and I found this very soothing to have a book, because we had a lot of downtime before delivery, um, and it just made me like have something else to comp think about. And speaking of which, John brought his Kindle which he used, he read a lot during our stay. I didn't end up picking up the book at all after I delivered the baby, but I was happy to have it before the procedure and then before the delivery. Now I also had packed our charging cords in this bag in case, you know, we needed them for the long haul. Uh, my um, computer charger and then two extra long, uh, they're like 10 foot USB cable chargers, you know, lightning for your iPhone and devices. And, um, didn't end up needing that length, but I was glad that I brought them because they're colored, they're not white, so I could really tell they were ours. Um, and then I also had packed Don's iPad, which isn't in here anymore, um, which he used quite a bit during our hospital stay. Our hospital was equipped with Wi-Fi, and he used it to like look up stuff and, and stay in touch with family and things, so that was, that was really helpful. I also had my wallet and my phone in there as well. Um, and I packed a bag of pretzels, which is no longer there for Don as a snack. I, of course, couldn't eat anything um, because just in case of surgery, they don't want you eating anything, you have to fast. Um, but I wanted to make sure he had something and I'd heard that it's best to bring snacks that aren't smelly, um, especially around somebody super sensitive to scent like me as, at very pregnant moment. <laughs> um, so I thought pretzels were a good thing and it ended up being great because he scarfed down a whole bunch right before we went into surgery because it was kind of, you know, we kind of knew we might have to do the C-section, we just weren't sure. Um, but it was nice that he had something to fill his belly with before, you know, the procedure. And then the recovery was a long time after that spent in recovery. It was a while before we got settled in the room, even though the procedure itself wasn't very long. And lastly, I had my little, to labor and delivery kit. And this I put together with a vaginal birth in mind. Now we had known that there might be a chance that we could have a vaginal birth even with a low amniotic fluid reading because we were trying for the external version where they were gonna try to flip the baby. Um, in which case if they did and I had the low amniotic fluid reading again, then they would induce and I would you know, go into labor and deliver vaginally. So I wanted to just keep this as it was. Um, so some of these things I didn't end up using because I didn't labor at all. Um, but this I used a lot during um, the, our stay at the hospital. I kept this little case out on my little like rolling cart tray table thing next to me and I kept all my essentials in it. So it has everything in it that I packed for labor and or you know for labor basically but I also used a lot of it you know, for other things. I have a little uh, wet brush, mini wet brush with some hair ties. Didn't end up using the hair ties. I didn't need end up putting my hair up at all during the whole time we were there. Um, but uh, the brush was obviously very handy to have so it didn't look like a total mess all the time. Mini deodorant. I've been wearing um, just regular deodorant, not an antiperspirant um, for the past year basically. Um, but I knew I wanted to bring an antiperspirant in the case of labor um, because I just needed something that packed more of a punch. So this is what I wore all last week, but now I'm back to wearing my normal, just regular deodorant that doesn't have any aluminum or anything in it. Um, I brought a pair of scissors. I always travel with scissors. You never know when you're gonna need them. They did come in handy a few times to like open things at the, during our stay. Um, I brought a little, little Ziploc baggie. You never know when you're gonna need that. Um, I had a little hand cream, which I only used before delivery because it's actually rather scented, so I didn't use that after because I didn't want to bother the baby with anything scented. My favorite lip product, the Smith's Rosebud Salve. Love this, use this constantly. It is true, your lips get super chapped in the hospital. Um, even like the second I checked into labor and delivery before anything was happening, um, before the procedure or anything, I was like immediately needing this. And I use this constantly throughout my stay. It's my favorite um, lip balm. 
I packed a little hair clip. This was one of those things I thought maybe for labor. Didn't end up using that at all. Another thing I didn't end up using at all was this little cloth headband I thought maybe for labor. Obviously didn't labor, didn't sweat, didn't need that. And then I packed some face wipes in case I had, um, you know, wanted just to like feel fresh on my face. And I didn't end up using these either because like I said, I never got that hot. And then after I delivered, the hospital provided me with some lanolin, um, which is a like an ointment, a balm kind of ointment that helps with cracks and sore nipples. Um, and I just threw them in here because I did use it during the, my hospital stay, but I didn't actually like it that much. So um, my mother-in-law actually brought us a couple of things that um, I hadn't packed because um, I knew the hospital would provide the lanolin. I didn't know if I I didn't know if I would need something else, but I had bought a different nipple butter, which I don't have in here. It's actually in the nursery by my nursing chair, but it's by Earth Mama Angel, and it's amazing. I'm still using it. It works. It is organic. It is natural, and it is safe for baby. I do wipe it off anyway. Just I don't know. I'm kind of weird about that, but um, it works. What can I say? It works. The other thing I had my mother-in-law pick up for me were these Lanaso Soothies gel pads. I had a real problem with um, the latch um, for the first few weeks, uh, but especially at the beginning, I had some major, major nipple issues. And the nurses had said they don't carry these at the hospital, but they said a lot of people swear by these. And what they are are these little gel pads. Um, they're just really, really soothing. And you put them on, you know, between feedings. Um, and they were my life savior for like a few days until I read that it's best to let the nipple kind of have a bit more air. So I moved on to my bamboo um, breast pads instead, which I use currently. Uh, but these were really, really helpful for, for those early, early days. Okay, so now I'm gonna take you through what I packed and I'll tell you exactly what I used and what I didn't and what I found really useful and what really wasn't at all in the main bag. So after I delivered and I was in recovery, um, Don went to the car and got our stuff. Um, things that I don't have here to show you are a pillow and a blanket that I had packed for Don. Very important that we brought those things. Um, the hospital provided us with a lots and lots of pillows. There was no restriction on how many pillows we could have, but our pillow was just like a million times nicer. So I was glad that he had a nice pillow to sleep on and I packed a nice chenille throw for him um, because the hospital blankets are kind of thin um, and it's pretty cold. I was running pretty hot, so I didn't really need anything extra, but uh, he needed something. So uh, that was good to have. Another thing that I'm not showing you in this video that I packed was my boppy, absolutely critical for me with the C-section because it just helped so much to keep the baby elevated above my tummy while I was learning how to breastfeed. And I still use it, I use it every time I nurse her. Uh, I use it to hold her. It just helps protect where my incision is in my lower belly. Um, and it also just kind of takes the weight off. You know, I'm not supposed to be doing a whole lot right now. So those things were really, really important. And the last thing I'm not gonna show you because I don't have it anymore is we brought a couple of boxes of Godiva truffles for the nursing staff that we gave them when we left. So we sent a box down to the labor and delivery nurses who were great. And then we gave a box to the mother and baby ward nurses as well um, because I knew I'd wanted to give a gift of some sort, but we had been advised that anything of monetary you know, with a monetary value, like a gift card or anything like that wasn't appropriate. So we thought, oh, chocolate. That's appropriate for every occasion. So um, those are the things I don't have to show you here. Everything else I'm gonna show you actually fit in this bag. Everything I needed for all three of us worked like a charm, fit perfectly. So first I'm gonna go through the things that I packed for Dawn and for Cece, little Charlotte. So I used, of course I used my Eagle Packet Cubes and I used one different color for each of us and our hospital room did have a little kind of nightstand with three drawers so each of us had a drawer and we just popped these right in there like each drawer, we put one of our little pa um, packet cubes in there and it worked great. Um, so for Don, he had worn his sneakers. Packing his flip flops was 
critically important. I actually didn't think to pack his flip-flops, but again, my lovely mother-in-law, Don's mom, picked them up from the house for us so that he could have flip-flops because I was advised to kind of walk around the ward once I felt up to it several times a day and it was and Don was running in and out to get water and, and you know snacks and things so it was just easier for him than putting on his shoes every time to have his flip-flops. So I would definitely recommend that for your you know, whoever's gonna be staying with you at the hospital if, if, if possible. I also packed just his favorite um, black t-shirts. These are like by Jockey, I think. Um, and I packed, I think four of these because he wore the shirt that he wore, you know, on Monday, the Monday I delivered. And then I had a shirt for him every day. I only have one left in here, um, but I didn't, you know, everything's in the laundry right now. <laughs> I'd also packed him two pairs of mesh shorts. He actually only ended up wearing one, so that's clean. And I'd packed him a pair of pajama pants because I didn't know how cold it was gonna get. Um, he didn't actually end up wearing those. It was pretty chilly in the hospital, but Don tends to run really, really warm. So he didn't, he didn't need that. Um, so that's what I brought for Don. Um, and he, like I said, also has Kindle and his iPhone and his iPad that we packed in the, the tote bag. Okay, for Cece, Cece had this fun print packet cube. I didn't, I knew I didn't need anything for her in terms of like diapers or wipes or any of that stuff, hospital provides all of that. And I knew I didn't need any clothes for her during our stay there. So all I did was bring a couple of uh, outfit options for our way home, because I didn't know how big she would be, so I brought two different sizes of going home outfits and a couple of blankets. Um, so her little going home outfit, she ended up only being six pounds, um, six ounces was when born, and then when we were discharged from the hospital five days later, she was down to five pounds, 15 ounces. So she was a little munchkin. Um, so she, she still fits in the newborn stuff. This is the Baby Gap newborn stuff. This was the little sleeper she wore at the hospital to come home in, I mean. That was her first outfit. Um, super, super cute. I think I sh showed that in a haul, actually. I also had brought a little onesie. I didn't know how cold it was going to be. If I wanted to double her up or whatever, I ended up not needing to because we were able to pull the car basically right up to the hospital, so I didn't feel like it, we really needed that. And I bundled her up in her car seat. You know, I tucked a blanket around her when we left. I also packed this little hat from Baby Gap, which is sized as up to seven pounds. I wasn't going to insert a picture of my girl in this hat my five pound, 15 ounce baby going home in this hat. This hat was ridiculously big. I don't think it would fit her head now. Um, so I don't know why this ran so big. It's a really cute hat from Baby Gap. It matches the outfit and everything. Huge, she swam in it. Um, I kept it on her um, just because I didn't want her head to be cold on the way home in the car. But uh, yeah, that hat is not true to size. I'd also brought a, a little sleep, another little sleeper outfit from Baby Gap in a three month size, a zero to three month size. Same with the little onesie, the little bodysuit. Um, obviously didn't end up using those because she's a tiny little munchkin. Uh, <laughs> then I brought two blankets for going home in. I knew I wouldn't need blankets in the hospital. They provide blankets. Um, I brought one of my Aiden and Anna um, muslin blankets really nice soft cozy one. Didn't up using that because again our weather has been very variable. I wasn't sure how warm or how cool it's going to be. It ended up being kind of chilly. So I used the Pottery Barn Chamois Stroller Blanket which I love. Love this. I also have it in a gray dot that lives downstairs. This one lives upstairs. And this is what I used after she was all safely buckled in her car seat. I tucked this around her lower bits, <laughs> you know, her lower half to keep her warm um, on for the way home. Um, now we have a, like, a cover thing over the car seat. It's like safety approved or whatever um, for winter weather when we have to take her out to doctor's appointments and stuff. Um, and it has like a built-in blanket, which was great, but I actually didn't think to pack that for the hospital, so I was happy to have that blanket. And then the last thing I brought for CC was my little, what is this called even? I think it's the Zo Zoli? Yeah, the little Zoli nail buffer. 
Um, I had read about this on Mint Arrow's website. I love her blog. She does great sales stuff, but I really especially love her baby like product recommendations. Um, and this has different file attachments for different age of baby. And I have the newborn attachment on it. It's super gentle. And I used this to buff her nails down so they weren't so sharp in the hospital. Um, and it's what I use to keep her nails under control at home so she doesn't scratch her face. It's super gentle. I do it when she's sleeping. She doesn't even wake up. Um, it's so, so gentle. I mean, you can, it, it, you can barely feel it, but their nails are so pliable that it actually works. And then as they get older, you change out the um, buffer tabs to match the age of your child because their nails harden as they get older. That's everything I brought for baby. The rest of the stuff was basically for me. <laughs> so I had brought a robe. I had I'd somehow managed to stuff this really big fluffy rope into this Eagle Creek packet um, stuff sack. I don't, I don't know if that's actually what it's called. I mean, you'll be amazed when you see how big this robe is, but I was able to stuff it in here, which made it just easier to pack. Um, robe was really great to have, especially because I was encouraged to move around, um, to walk around the halls, and I didn't want to wear, like, my nightgown walking around the halls. So having a robe was nice. Now that I know how warm that I was during that entire time, even in a very, like, climate-controlled, cool hospital, next time I would bring a much lighter weight robe. But I know that I generally tend to run cold, so I thought I wanted something really fluffy and cozy and actually bought this special for my delivery. This is from Victoria's Secret. I bought it big. I bought it in a large because I just wanted it to be roomy and comfortable. I had no idea how big I was going to be afterwards. I had no idea if I was going to be able to labor and wear this while laboring while, you know, nine months pregnant. I had no idea. So I really like this robe. It is so, so warm though. It was too warm for me. I still wore it, but next time, you know, if there is a next time, if I'm blessed with another child, I will definitely pack a lighter robe, but I do recommend having a robe. And I would bring a robe for either kind of delivery or any length of stay. I also packed slippers and another smaller stuff sack. These are also Victoria's Secret. I think these were a free, free gift with um, purchase of pajamas a couple years ago. Um, and they're, they're just, you know, little slippers. Again, a little bit warm. I think I would pack slightly less hot slippers in for, you know, future times if, if possible. Uh, but it was nice to have something with a hard sole that I could walk around the hospital with that was comfortable, that didn't require me having to like put a shoe on. You know, like it's nice to just have like a slide on thing. Um, I have a friend of mine who brought Crocs to the hospital, which I think is brilliant. And I actually have a pair of, garden, of Crocs that I use for gardening that I would totally pack next time and just wash them off, you know, really well. But I think that's a brilliant idea because it's not so hot, but it gives you protection. So I brought those things, and then the last packet cube was for me. This is a purple, you know, everybody had their own color, like I said. So this is where I add, added a few things. I had added a few shirts um, to Don's, oh, I forgot to mention, in Don's um, packet cube, I also had also packed him underwear and socks, but all those things got worn, so they're not there anymore. But I packed him four pairs of underwear and four pairs of socks, one for every additional day we were there. Um, so I would added a few things to this when I was pretty sure I was going to probably have a c-section because originally I had just packed one night shirt and then I packed another one because I knew we were going to be there a little bit longer. I bought these, again, these are things I bought especially for um, my labor slash delivery um, and I just read so many people suggesting a button down night shirt for the hospital because uh, they provide hospital gowns but they're just, they're not very, you know, they're a little flimsy. Let's just put it that way. They kind of drape open. So I wanted something that was easy for breastfeeding that I felt comfortable in, that was still easy access for the nurses to check me. I had to, my incision was checked multiple times a day, once a day by an OB, you know, doctor, and like four, five or six times a day by nurses. Um, so they needed easy access down there. So I knew I wasn't gonna be wearing pants or anything. And there's really no pants I can wear right now anyway. <laughs> how my incision is. Um, so I bought these from Nordstrom. They're Lauren, Lo Lauren, Lauren by Ralph Lauren. Is that how you say that? I don't know. Again, I bought them big. I bought a large because I just wasn't sure how big I was going to be after I delivered. I just wanted to be comfortable. So I just, you know, erred on the side of caution. Um, and I'm glad I did because this kind of jersey knit one actually runs a bit tighter. So it actually fits 
perfectly um, and it's so nice and soft. I just rolled up the sleeves and it's really long. It actually almost comes down to my knees so it's pretty well covering but like I said I wore my um, robe whenever I was out and about in the halls but it was just nice to have something comfy that I had washed myself that felt you know comfortable to me to wear in the hospital that was easy access for breastfeeding and then I bought this light fan flannel one which is my favorite it is so soft I want to buy more of these this is enormous um, I wouldn't buy a large now I'd probably buy a small or a medium but it it's wonderful and I've been wearing both of these constantly since I've gotten home. I just keep washing them. Um, so <laughs> those were really, really good things to buy for delivery and for my recovery. Um, it's just easy access for breastfeeding and it's comfortable. I had brought the Belly Bandit. Um, haven't worn this yet. Got clearance from the doctor to wear it if I want. Haven't wanted to wear it. Um, I've heard lots of good things about people wearing ba belly bandits, especially post C-section. Um, I think maybe when I'm allowed to be more active, that's when I'll start wearing it. I'm kind of waiting until after um, my post-surgery, my first post-surgery checkup with my doctor to wear it because I just want to get the go-ahead to be more active before I wear this because I'm not really supposed to be on my feet that much and I feel like this isn't that comfortable to wear just sitting down. Um, so uh, I didn't wear it, but I brought it. Another thing I didn't wear but brought was this gowny and it's a kind of my own hospital gown, actually a really kind viewer sent me. Um, and I had totally planned on using this if I was able to have a vaginal delivery. I was gonna put this on after the vaginal delivery, um, you know, to go up and get checked into mother and baby and stuff, um, just to have something nice and clean to put on. And that was my plan with this, but didn't have that experience, so didn't get a chance to wear it. Um, and I just wore my other nightshirts and said, I will hang on to this for future possibilities, who knows. The other clothes I brought were really just to come home in um, and some socks to wear at the hospital, although I didn't end up wearing socks that much because I was pretty hot. I packed a few pairs of my favorite aloe um, slipper socks. These are by, is it Earthworks or something? I don't know, you get them at Ulta. These were actually a gift from my mom for Christmas, so I packed those um, and I wore them a little bit, but like I said, I was pretty hot. I packed a couple pairs of just regular little socks. These are Mickey socks. Um, I wore one to come home in, but I didn't wear the other pair. I just didn't know if I'd want to wear socks or not, and I really didn't need to with my slippers um, because most of the time I was in bed recovering. And then I also packed a couple of sleep masks. We left the lights on pretty much the whole time we were there. We had baby with us pretty much the whole time. We did not send her to nursery very often. I think there was one night where we sent her where we were kind of desperate because we hadn't slept at all for like 48 hours. Um, so we had sent her one night, um, but the other nights we had her with us and I, this was just something that seemed nice to have. I think Don used one a couple of times. I didn't end up needing it. Um, I was so exhausted that whenever I could catch a wink, it didn't matter if it was bright or not. Uh, but we had kind of left the light on in the bathroom in the room with the door open quite a bit so we could see baby. Um, so I could basically, so I could see the baby well, and make sure she was breathing and stuff as a new mom, you know. The only other thing I packed was going home outfit. So I packed a pair of maternity kind of lightweight jersey sweatpants because um, I figured there's really virtually no waistband and that would be comfortable. And then I packed this nursing top I had got ordered from Pink Blush. Really loosey-goosey nursing top, lightweight, easy to wear, not gonna rub on anything or be tight or anything. And then a maternity, a nursing bra. Um, and this is by, is it Bravado? Yeah, Bravado. Um, I like the Bravado bras, they're working out for me so far. And then lastly, I had thrown in a couple pairs of the ridiculously huge underwear I'd bought. Um, but they cut into my belly a bit and agitate like around the scar, so I just ended up wearing the hospital mesh underwear, which has been a godsend. I'm still wearing it. I was sent home with a bunch, and I just keep washing them, and I'm hand washing them, and they've been holding up. So uh, <laughs> I'll take it, because comfort is king especially after surgery. I know this is a long video, you guys, I'm sorry, but there's a lot to share. Um, lastly, I have some, oh, not lastly, I have our toiletries I packed in this bag that I got from 
I ordered this from Kuyana a while ago, a long time ago. And our toiletries are in here. I didn't pack any makeup or any cosmetic things of any sort. Um, I packed some Advil for Don just in case he needed it. And then I also had my vitamins and supplements in here, which I used. A couple of facial cottons, didn't, um, which I used some of. Um, dental care, we have our toothbrushes, toothpaste, um, Listerine, floss, we used all of those things. Um, I did pack myself a razor because I like to shave my underarms every day. I just, it makes me feel human. So I did use that. Dawn's deodorant, my deodorant was in my little other case, obviously. I brought my combs. Um, I brought Dawn's comb. And then for skincare, I tried to keep it pretty simple. I just brought my face wash, which I used in the shower. I took a shower every day. I used, uh, I brought my little homemade toner, which is 50% apple cider vinegar, 50% rose water glycerin. And then I brought a little mini, um, is it Eucerin? Is that how you pronounce that? Um, moisturizing cream, it's unscented. I just wanted something unscented so I didn't, you know, bother the baby and I basically just applied it to my arms and Don kind of lathered up my legs because hospital is drying so keep that in mind and then a little um, eye cream and then I also had deposited a little bit of my face cream a juice beauty face cream into a little thing um, so that was all we really needed for toiletries I brought my own cup which I was so happy I did because while the hospital did provide me with a really big cup like this and with the flexi straw and everything it, I didn't like the way, like it kind of tasted plasticky when you drank out of it, whereas this one does not. And it's been my favorite cup post, you know, since we've been home too, because I have two of these, one I leave in the nursery by my nursing chair and one I leave in the bedroom here, which is basically where I've been spending all of my time since I'm not really supposed to do the stairs yet. Um, and they're 32 ounces and Don only has to fill them up, you know, a few times a day. I go through a lot of water with breastfeeding, but I really, really liked having my own cup at the hospital um, because I like this cup. I like the straw. It's a nice big straw. It doesn't taste weird when you put water in it. Like it doesn't get that weird plasticky taste. Um, so that was actually really important for me. I know that seems kind of frivolous, but that's that was it. And then last but not least, I brought the manual for our car seat. Even though I had studied this beforehand and practiced it, um, I, I wasn't, you know, I wanted to bring this just in case we couldn't figure it out. Uh, we didn't end up needing it because I remembered everything. And then I also brought a spare tote bag. This is a really big one. All the ones I have are kind of smaller, so I picked this one up at the container store, especially for this occasion. It's by Rumi. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's really, really big. Um, and I thought that I would need this to bring home, you know, the little extra goodies they send you home from the hospital with. They'll send you home with a lot of things like diapers and cloth wipes. They're not really cloth. Um, and, um, you know, the extra mesh underwear. And you can take home any of the pads or anything that are left over. Um, you know, they'd send you home with a lot of stuff, but they actually provided us with a tote bag that I put all that stuff in. So I put our dirty laundry in there. Um, and that was great because I could just dump that out when I got home and not have to like sort through the bag and stuff. And that was everything we brought. Like I said, I don't know if I said this, but I had packed, like I had been prepping the bag. I kind of like had everything arranged on our bureau. At about 35 weeks, I started kind of organizing things. I packed the bag at 37 weeks pregnant and I needed it at 37 and a half weeks pregnant for that first emergency run. And then at 38 weeks pregnant, we actually used it. So I do recommend packing your bag earlier than you think. <laughs> um, I would say 37 weeks at the latest, if not earlier. Um, it's just better to have things ready. Um, you know, the things that I couldn't put in that I put in at the last minute were just my phone and my wallet and like Don's iPad. I think that was about all that we had to throw in at the last minute. Um, and I felt like we really had everything we needed and I used most everything with the exception of like the underwear and some of the socks and wishing that I had just packed lighter weight robe and slippers. Um, and Don didn't need all of his heavier things either, but I was glad to have them and they didn't take up that much room and I felt like I really kind of nailed it, to be honest. Oh, and lastly, I forgot to mention this, the other thing I had in my tote bag was my journal. Um, so if you wanna like, you know, keep track of things that happen to you, your experience with delivery, um, your experience in the hospital, I recommend bringing something to write it down with because it might, 
you'd be surprised how things escape your brain quickly when you have a newborn. Uh, but anyway, I'm sorry this was a super long video, but I hope it was helpful to some of you. Um, if you're interested in packing a hospital bag at some point for delivery, mine's kind of C-section focused, but a lot of these things I would have bought for vaginal delivery as well. And I hope to see you guys again real soon. I'm gonna do my best to film when I can grab a moment here and Don can hold baby for me. But um, I hope you guys are all well. Thank you so, so much for all of your kind words and support. It just means the world to me. And I will see you guys soon. Bye, guys. Take care.